Right, warm well, welcome to today's talk, Tuesday evening, the 4th of October. Now, um, ivermectin has been back in the news, partly because of this chap uh, here. Uh, now, I know a lot of you uh, follow Russell Brand because you get stats on YouTube that tells you who follows whose channel. I know quite a few that watch this channel also watch Russell's channel. And we did an interview with him, of course, on this channel um, a few months back now. Uh, but he seems to have uh, got one of these community strikes from YouTube, or, or at least a warning. So uh, I think it's probably he's probably got what I got here. This is a a channel violation, uh, active community guideline strikes, and this is quite alarming because if I get another one, it's got serious consequences for the channel. Uh, it wasn't for this video. I hasten to add, of course, I'm not telling what it was for because I'm not allowed to mention it. Um, that was just my, my last video that was on. So um, because we have to be really careful here, I'm going to be going virtually exclusively from the uh, the CDC site where we talk about uh, anti, sorry, National Institutes of Health site rather, where we talk about antiviral therapies. Uh, now, this site clearly says that ivermectin is an antiparasitic drug that is being evaluated to treat COVID-19. So it's being evaluated. We are not saying it's been recommended. It is not recommended. It's being uh, evaluated. So uh, quite an important distinction there. I think that's where Russell might have gone wrong. Actually, it's being it's being it's being uh, evaluated, and uh, we'll come on to the principal trial later on. So it's it's just being evaluated at the moment, and of course, just to make sure we've got this completely correct. If we go on to the, uh, this is the actual um, site here, wasn't that first one, there we go. Um, antiviral therapy, there, there it is there. Various drugs have been used there. Ivermectin is there. And if you click on that one, you go on to the next site there and that gives you the information we're going to be going on. So um, hopefully we're going to be completely consistent with National Institutes of Health guidelines because we have to be consistent with official guidelines. So this is direct from the uh, official FDA site. Ivermectin is a, is a Food and Drug Administration FDA approved antiparasitic drug. So it's for treating uh, parasites and has done so very well in poorer countries, uh, more tropical countries, typically, not always. Uh, used to treat uh, several neglected tropical diseases. Well, thankfully, they're no longer neglected now because they've got an effective treatment, including onchocerciasis. Uh, helminiasis and uh, scabies. I'm surprised they actually said helminiasis here. I would have thought you'd use abendazole or mabendazole really to treat these kind of worm infections. But this is the National Institutes of Health, so we can't argue with it. Um, Filariasis, of course, is the one that blocks up the lymphatics and causes these huge swollen up uh, limbs. And onchocerciasis is the one that causes, it's a worm that causes river blindness. Now, these used to be completely endemic in many parts of Africa, caused terrible problems, but thankfully ivermectin has largely eliminated them. I was actually doing, if you'd watched the videos, I don't know if you've seen them or not, but I was doing some uh, community health work in rural Africa last month and I saw no cases of onchocerciasis. I was looking out for it, I saw no cases and uh, I saw no cases of um, of uh, filariasis as well, either the, the, the elephantiasis. So I saw no river blindness and no elephantiasis, which is excellent news, largely because it's been eliminated. So pretty good news on that front. Uh, for these indications, uh, NIH goes on. Uh, ivermectin has been widely used and generally uh, well tolerated. Ivermectin is not approved by the FDA for the treatment of any viral infection. So let's be quite clear, that's the guideline there. We're quite clear on that. That is the actual, uh, that's the website there. Uh, that's quite clear about the, uh, the fact that it's not uh, recommended for treating any viral infections. Uh, but the, the site does go on to talk about, interestingly, proposed mechanisms of action and rationale for use of patients with COVID-19. Now, it's not recommending it, and we're not recommending it on this channel, but it does give some rationales from uh, in vitro studies, uh, which means uh, basically in test tube, laboratory studies. In vitro literally means in glass. And uh, the National Institutes of Health says it suggests that ivermectin acts, acts by 
inhibiting important uvular transport proteins. These are actually transport proteins that allow things to go from the cytoplasm into the nucleus that facilitate the function of the cell. And of course, um, uh, vir all viral particles are manufactured inside uh, living cells. Um, interferes with sars coronavirus 2 spike protein, pro spike protein attachment to the human cell membrane. Uh, some studies of ivermectin have also reported potent anti-inflammatory properties uh, shown to inhibit replication of sars coronavirus 2 in cell cultures. Um, but it goes on to be quite clear, and let's be quite clear, the NIH is saying that the empirical clinical studies do not support the use of ivermectin. That's what they're saying. So we have to be very clear about that. And um, uh, even though it gives these potential, um, it, 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 the, these potential um, modalities via uh, of action, it does go on to um, give rationales and saying why it's not not recommended. Now, um, just to clarify um, the uh, YouTube position on this, um, the the uh, my, my YouTube videos are used quite extensively around the world, so it would just be devastating if, if the channel was taken down. So I'm being very, very careful. Uh, COVID mis uh, medical mis misinformation policy. This is from Google and YouTube. Uh, if you're posting content, don't post content on YouTube if it includes any of the following. So the first is about treatment information for COVID-19. Uh, content, this is direct from the uh, YouTube Google site. Uh, content that claims there's a guaranteed cure for COVID-19. Of course there isn't a guaranteed cure for COVID-19. Of course not. There's no guaranteed cure for hardly anything. Oh, well, Dennis, yeah, very few. <laughs> anyway, uh, so of course not. We agree completely with the guideline. A content that recommends the use of ivermectin or hydro hydroxychloroquine for the treatment of COVID-19. We are not recommending the use of ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine for the treatment of COVID-19, to be quite clear. Categorical claims that ivermectin is effective treatment for COVID-19. I, I don't think I've ever made a categorical claim about any treatment in my life. So I certainly wouldn't make a, a categorical claim about uh, ivermectin as being an effective treatment for COVID-19. Uh, claims that ivermectin and hydro hydroxychloroquine are safe to use in the prevention of COVID-19. So we're not saying they're safe to use in the prevention of COVID-19. We're abiding by the guidelines. Other content that discourages people from consulting medical professionals or seeking medical advice. Um, if you've watched any of these videos, we know we go out of our way to say, don't take my advice for anything. Do not take any medical advice from this channel. Always consult your own doctor or healthcare provider, of course. The idea that we would say anything that it would prevent someone taking medical advice is unthinkable. Uh, we don't do that. Uh, and then about prevention of COVID-19, misinformation, contents that promotes uh, methods that contradict local uh, health authority. So we're going by the NIH here and uh, the WHO. So we're not allowed to contradict the World Health Organization, headed by uh, Dr. Tedros um, who, of course, was a uh, Ethiopian uh, politician. Uh, he's not a medical doctor. Uh, he is a PhD in... Uh, I'm not quite sure. It, it, it's a highly relevant subject. Anyway, I don't know why I just strayed onto that, uh, scrubbed that bit. Um, you all know who heads the World Health Organization anyway. Uh, so anyway, we're not allowed to contradict WHO. Uh, claims that there is a guaranteed prevention method of COVID-19. Of course, nothing is guaranteed. Of course not. Claims that uh, any medication or vaccine or vaccination is guaranteed uh, prevention for COVID-19. Of course not. No medicine or vaccine will guarantee it. Uh, content that recommends the use of ivermectin or hydro hydroxychloroquine for the prevention of COVID-19. We are not recommending that. Claims that ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine are safe to use in the prevention of COVID-19. We are not suggesting that either. So there we go. Um, I wanted to go through those because I've got to make sure I'm squeaky clean on those. And hopefully that's clarified it. Now, F back to the FDA. Um, monitoring adverse effects and drug interactions. Um, now, this was um, this is the uh, this is the FDA uh, website here. You might remember that one. It was something like, come on, you all, you're not a horse or you're not a summer cow or something. Don't use ivermectin. And, and we agree completely. Um, although if you look at it now, they have toned down the vernacular somewhat <laughs> on the website. Um, of course, of course, um, any medication intended for 
animals, including ivermectin, should not be used to treat COVID-19 or any other disease in humans. Of course, of course, of course, of course, we agree uh, completely uh, and eminently with that. Um, so FDA recommendation. The panel, uh, the panel recommends against the use of ivermectin for the treatment of COVID-19, except in clinical trials. Uh, the panel will continue to review emerging data on ivermectin use, including the results from two large ongoing randomised clinical trials. Now, this bit here was not highlighted. So I don't, I couldn't work out, maybe I'm just being a bit thick, but I couldn't work out what two ongoing randomised controlled trials they were talking about. They don't say. Now, they do recommend that you go to clinicaltrials.org um, or .gov. Uh, .gov yeah. so, so these are ongoing clinical trials here. Now, you won't be able to read this, but there's one there that's in Bangkok that's recruiting. I will show you a blow-up of this in a minute. Uh, there's one there that's recruiting in Egypt, and there's one there that's recruiting in uh, Malaysia. Um, and there's one not yet recruiting, so we don't know where it is. So that's the site they tell us to go to. Um, so there's clinical trials. So it looks like the um, FDA are going to be going on clinical trials from Bangkok, Egypt, and Malaysia is the indication there. But what large clinical trials that we're talking about, I don't know, but I suspect that this is one of them here. I would think this has to be one of them here. This is the, the principal trial. Uh, for the, the Oxford University uh, collaboration-based uh, trial. Uh, now, this is the principal trial here that we're going to talk about now. Uh, and the, 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 the principal trial here is... Um, have we got a blur? Have we got that? Yeah, there, there we go. Uh, that's the particular uh, trial there that's mentioned. Um, ivermectin to be investigated in adults aged 18 plus as a possible treatment for COVID-19 in the Prince. In the principal trial, so I think this is the one that they probably are referring to, uh, related to Oxford University, Nuffield Department of Primary Healthcare, Primary Healthcare Trust, National Institutes of Health and Care Research, UK Research and Innovation, Royal College of General Practitioners. Uh, at least they've got all these things plastered over there, uh, or at least mentioned on their uh, website. So that's the trial there. So th I thought I'd just look at the uh, the timeline of this now. Um, the timeline for this is uh, here. Uh, this is this is the ti this is the timeline that they're going on for for this. And again, that might be a little difficult to see. So I've done um, I've done a bit of a, a blow up of this. So um, this is the uh, this is that timeline here. And we see that the ivermectin was added to the trial in June 2021. And there's the blow up of that June 2021. And uh, there's nothing else after that. It doesn't report the results. So this is a bit strange. So that, that's the reference for that there. Do check it out. Make sure I'm not making this up, which I assure you I'm not. It's all direct from the site. So um, June. Um, so this, this ivermectin arm started in June 2021. So that's June... July, August, September, October, November, December. That's six months. Then this year, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. That's 10 months. So 10 and 6 is 16. So it's 16 months since this trial was started. 16 months. 16 months, really, Oxford University, really, principal trial, 16 months, and you haven't reported a single diddly squat yet, as far as I'm aware of. 16 months. I would have, might have thought it might be a little bit faster than that, but, but that, there you go. Um, so um, there's other things we could mention on this video, but I, d I don't think we will at the moment. Now, um, personally, uh, I, I do keep a supply of ivermectin uh, in the house, uh, just in case I get, um, just in case I get uh, onchocerosis, helminiasis, scabies. Uh, so um, th these are readily available. Th th these are in, in these are from India. These ones actually, and they come in th th they come in different strengths, but these ones are uh, twelve milligram. Uh, 
12 milligram um, tablets. So uh, good to keep a few strips of those in the house just in case they get onchocerosis or uh, scabies or helminiasis. But of course we're being quite clear that the FDA are not recommending ivermectin for the use of any viral infection and they are not recommending the use of ivermectin for COVID-19. So hopefully that clarifies the situation. I think that's where Russell Brand probably went wrong. Um, um, he's still posting videos to YouTube, of course, so um, I would imagine though he's being uh, uh, more careful about what he's, uh, what he's saying, as indeed am I. Thank you for watching.